Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this video is for star seeds. It very specifically is transmitting the catalyst to change your experience of time, your perception of time. Yes, it is a tarot reading, but as always, my tarot readings, and I would say most people's tarot readings, are energy work in disguise, right? The, the video, the talking, the cards is entertainment for the mind so that the energy work can go on behind the scenes. Some of you might be able to see the blue and the red coming together. The blue and the red coming together here. You can also look at this in terms of your soul and your physical body coming together in a deeper level of union. Perhaps you're experiencing this externally between you and another person coming into a deeper level of union. For those who like astrology, this is the harmonization of the Scorpio and the Taurus axis. Capricorn and Cancer also involved here because this is about time. Slowing down to speed up. Slowing down to speed up. Immersing yourself in the minutia of your life. In the minutia of your life. Sixth house matters. Your basic daily routines. Things you have to do around the house. The things we think of as being mundane, as being boring, as being chores, as being maybe being not even spiritual, maybe even getting in the way of our spirituality. Some people, not, not everyone, but some of you might be feeling like, feeling disconnected from spirit, somehow feeling like your spirituality or your spiritual journey has been interrupted, um, like you've been focused on the material world. And some of you might worry that that is somehow like you've somehow gotten off course or like you're somehow disconnected or like you've taken a step off of your spiritual journey. That is not, that is not the case. So just you can, any fears or worries or just concerns you have about that, you can just set aside and really allow yourself to perceive and kind of acknowledge and understand that the spiritual messages, the spiritual lessons, the spiritual journey itself has simply been coming through on a physical level, on a mundane level, on a very, very human level. Anything that's been going on in your, in your physical human life, including if nothing has been going on, <laughs> including if nothing has been going on, maybe things have been boring for some of you, that in itself is really, 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 really is the spiritual process. Because the lines between your spiritual self or the higher realms, however you understand it, and your human life, your human mind, your human experience, the lines between the two are blurring, right? The lines between the two are blurring. And this has many, many, many implications. Um, it's a huge, massive topic. The, but the theme we're focusing on today is your experience of time. So this is actually part of how you are 
shifting into a new experience of time and it may not be clear <laughs> at first how like how that work how that's working or how your current human experience is relevant to the shift in your perception of time but it, it is that's why that's why you're seeing this video that's that's why you're here steps of aligned purpose these are the steps of aligned purpose trust every single one of your steps because It's like you're walking through a maze, walking through a labyrinth. Sometimes when you're going through a maze, it seems like you're backtracking, right? You said you, yeah, maybe, maybe the exit to the maze is over here, right? And you find yourself walking way over here and you might feel like you're getting off track, like you're going away from where you want. But no, that's actually just the path. That's the path that will get you there. Maybe it just goes all the way around, right? There is no direct linear path. So part of this process, this process in, that's not even really a process, just this experience that is available to you that is shifting your experience of time. It has many different sub <laughs> categories, sub themes, sub experiences, and you've been working through them one by one over your years, really years, years, years. This is a very, very, very years long process. So for, for most of us, right? For most of us, some, some people will click through this faster, but for most of us, this takes years. <laughs> um, the theme highlighted right now with this card is something you, if you've been watching my videos, you have already been working on for months or years, right? It is the shift from the linear, the linear progression through things that linear thinking that you can just go in a straight line to get somewhere <laughs> or that your life will just go smoothly in one direction, maybe, you know, smoothly up a slope. We've all been setting that aside, right? We're all starting to, to understand that everything is this non-linear progression that we go forward and then we go back a little bit and then we go forward and then we go back a little bit. And I'm sure you've been noticing how themes from the past sometimes sometimes you'll be walking around and you'll be like wow i suddenly really remember this moment 10 years ago 20 years ago five years ago last week whatever it is you're synchronizing with moments through time and start suddenly starting to understand wow that thing i was doing or thinking about 10 years ago wow suddenly it is so relevant for me right now but now i understand it on a whole nother level or i under or i perceive that experience from a whole different perspective something that didn't make sense 10 years ago suddenly i understand why i went through it because it took me here it was part of my non-linear path or maybe you read a book in high school and you understood it on a certain level and 20 years later you read it and you go wow i understand this on such a deeper level now because my entire life's journey has enabled me to experience it more deeply but that moment when you read the book 20 years ago and the moment when you read the book now they're they're very closely connected they're closely connected through time through time right you're, you're, you're synchronizing with your past <laughs> synchronizing with your future and these moments that click through time they're they're really all part of one experience so there are certain experience bubbles um, the book is a good example because you could read a book 10 times in your life if you live a hundred years and you read the same book every decade of your life the moment where you read that book is even if you've re you've read it over a hundred years, it's all one moment, and you just you have it split up and you experience it through time. That is that is part of this non-linear experience of time. That I think that for most of us, that kind of um, opening up to the non-linearity of your experience of time, that feels pretty strongly stabilized for the vast majority of the people who ever watched this video. So that's kind of been laying the groundwork, but there is a, there is a deeper experience here to like, there's a deeper experience available. <clears throat> Which I will get to <laughs> in due time. And you also already have an understanding of 
divine timing of, you know, perfect cosmic timing of everything happening, right time, right place. The violet spectrum. Remember when I said the red and the blue coming together? What do you get when you mix red and blue? You get purple, right? You get shades of purple and violet and all of that. This is, to me, this represents the type of expansion or ascension or growth that you experience when you bring two things into balance. Two people, two parts of yourself, soul and body, heaven and earth. Pick your pair. You bring them into balance, you create something new. You blend the colors together and create a new color. Time and space, space and time, space time, right? When you blend space and time together. This is very difficult for me to articulate because it is a, like a physical sensation I have in my body. It is a experience I am having as I am walking around <laughs> in my life. Um, it doesn't really like to be translated into words, but that's okay. The, the words I will use here are just something to give your mind to listen to. Really... Um, it's the energetic transmission here that is going to, if you want it to, right, if you want it to, um, can help you shift into a new experience of time. So my words <laughs> here are, we can just call them symbolic, right? Symbolic of the energy, which is really all language is. It's like when we created physical space, right? We created an expanse and then we filled it up with physical geography, physical space, so that we could have this experience of moving around and walking around and feeling the ground beneath our feet and feeling the sun on our face and having space and feeling crowded and feeling emptiness so that we could experience space That experience would have been incomplete without also having this experience of time where we move through time, we can move through time the same way we move through space. We just typically can't see the time construct. We can look around and see the physical geography, but most of us, most of the time, can't perceive the geography of time. We can't perceive the geography of time. We do bump up against the walls of time. We do bump up, we do bump up, we do interact with, we do sense the, the geography of time, the, the paths that we take through time. We do, we do sense this, we do perceive it on some level, but we don't we don't really see it with our eyes. We don't see it clearly. We don't see the whole picture. Perhaps, perhaps one day we will be able to fully, 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 fully see the geography of time on our way there. We can slow way down, slow, 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 way down, slow, 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 
way, way, way down. And that will allow us to ground ourselves into the geography of time. When you're watching this video, if it's really resonating, so if you're still here, then you have already done an enormous amount of work grounding into space, grounding into physical reality. The next phase on your journey is grounding into time, grounding into the time construct, the way you have grounded into the physical construct. Yes, time is an illusion, but it is an illusion we have created. Perhaps better to call it a time construct for this phase of your journey. It is a construct, something you have created for your experience on Earth, the same way you have created the physical matter, the space of Earth. This is a special experience for starseeds because starseeds have come down from higher frequencies of consciousness. And a side effect of that has been when starseeds are on Earth, are on Earth. They are typically operating at odds with Earth's time construct. Many starseeds, these are generalizations that will not apply to every single starseed. Some of them may resonate with you, tend to think very, very fast, tend to feel a mismatch between thoughts and communication, as if the mind is communicating too fast, the words can't come out fast enough. Starseeds often experience strange fluidity of time, time speeding up, time slowing down, time skippages. <laughs> It's a little bit like a, a record skipping, like a record skipping or a record being played too fast or then being played in rewind or being played too slow. Starseeds have had an inconsistent experience with time because their consciousness has not, has never really matched has, has never, <laughs> has never, your consciousness has never really matched the the speed with which time has been moving on earth. You have always been faster than it and Perhaps sometimes this has been very interesting to you. Perhaps it has seemed like having magical experiences with time. And that is true. It was, it was, or it can be, or it is very interesting to have this fluid, inconsistent experience with time. But there is another experience to be had here and it is worth exploring because it has many, many beneficial and beautiful things to offer you, including a much, much, much deeper level of satisfaction with your human experience, with your earth experience. When you slow right down, slow, 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 way down, slowing your consciousness down, slowing your perception down to the speed of Earth's time flow, you're not going to stay slow forever. That's not what this is about. That is actually why you have resisted slowing down to Earth's level <laughs> before because you were afraid that you would become sluggish, that you'd become slow, that you'd be, that you would lower your vibration, even that you would lose your intelligence 
or you would lose whatever makes you special. Those fears are a completely normal and even rational side effect of your mismatch with Earth's time flow, but it is not You can set those fears aside now because the the slow down, the slowing way down is not the end of it in and of itself. It is simply a, a mechanic of getting you synchronized with, with Earth's experience of time. You're not going to stay slow. Getting Staying slow is not the goal. It is just a temporary slowdown to get you synchronized with the time construct, with the time flow. And then this very, very powerful state is available to you once you have slowed down, once you have balanced and created the violet within you, right? Once you have balanced parts of yourself, once you have slowed down, it's this feeling of unlocking a new experience of power that you didn't know you had and that you didn't know could come from this type of experience. Slowing way down, getting fully, 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 fully present in your body, getting fully, 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 fully present in your physical environment. And then the third step, getting fully, fully, fully present in your perception of time where once you synchronize with the earth's time stream then from that place of singularity from that place of synchronicity from that place of having matched of having finally at long last met up understood experienced and perceived and perceived the time, like the flow and the speed at which the consensus time flow moves. <laughs> that actually allows you to speed up. It is almost like experiencing your life and experiencing reality at more frames per second. You have Slow, slowed way down but then it's like the time seems to stretch like seconds become longer because you actually ex can experience more time in every second this has to do with the way your consciousness is now able to interface with time it's not exactly that It's not exactly that anything is changing. It's not exactly that time is slowing or speeding up. The time flow is kind of just going the way the construct is set. And that is a separate topic, the, the way that the time construct is built by consensus and is maintained by consensus and has its own ecosystem is a separate conversation. All you need to know for this point is that it is doing its own thing and you are synchronizing with it and then you can experience more of it. Just as if, um, think about how slowing down allows you to experience more space. If you're driving very, very fast, or flying, in, or, if, or if you're in a plane, if you're a passenger in a plane, you can't see all of the details of the physical world around you. You're going too fast or you're too high up um, and everything kind of, you just kind of skip by everything which is its own beautiful and interesting experience. Starseeds have kind of been doing this with time. Been, they've been above time, they've been outside of time, they've been skipping around time, been going very, very fast through time, all of which is beautiful and wonderful and interesting in its own right. But also a new interesting experience here is to fully synchronize with the consensus time flow and then suddenly it's like the car has slowed way down and you look out the window and you go wow I never noticed 
all of those beautiful flowers right there. I want to get out and pick those flowers. I want to get out and look at this beautiful landscape. I want to get out and watch that sunset and watch and, and walk on the beach. And you can slow way down and have more satisfying, beautiful experiences. In this way, you can make better use of every single second. You can actually live more life in this one lifetime by Imagine every single second of your life and you've been kind of skipping past, skipping through every single second very, very fast. Imagine every second, which might seem like a very small sliver, imagine if every second becomes much larger to the extent where you actually div start dividing up every second into nanoseconds or some smaller, <laughs> some smaller division of a second, some smaller division of time because you're perceiving and experiencing and loving and enjoying all of these microseconds within the second. And the, the power here is that more of your consciousness is enmeshing with the time construct more before your consciousness wasn't quite fully interacting with the timeline because it was kind of skipping over it wasn't really inserting itself into into the time flow into the time construct now when you have slowed down more of your consciousness can seep in can insert itself can enter the time construct and from there opens up potential and possibility to experiment and learn how to manipulate time because now you're inserted into it. You're actually inserting more of yourself into the time flow. And there's this experience that is available to experience your life with so much vividness with so much more vividness and to be this will be this is something many of you most of you um very much need there there is a healing here a healing of your 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 experience of time a healing of all time related wounds if you think about it most of your wounds most of your problems most of your struggles if you really boil them way down, boil them right down to their essence, it comes down to time. Any feelings of despair and desperation, which are, which are the hallmarks of your most gruesome wounds and your most agonizing struggles, despair and desperation. Think about what makes you feel despair what what wounds what struggles what problems do you have make you feel despair and what do you lack what do you feel like you lack that makes you really desperate to to acquire it perhaps some feel desperate for money because they have gone without for so long and there's been so much hardship and it makes them despair and feel desperate only I could get enough money. I am desperate for money. Why does the universe not provide me the money that, that I need? For some, it is looking for love and feeling desperate to receive love from someone. For others, it is just the despair that they will never achieve some kind of success or feeling desperate to accomplish some kind of goal. All of those struggles and all of that despair, all of that agony, all of that desperation ceases to exist when you shift your experience of time, when you shift your perception of time. And one of the One of the reasons you designed these challenges and these struggles for yourself is to help you learn about time and to help you understand a 
and to help you get to this point where you can shift your experience of time. Because what you really want is to stop feeling the despair, is to stop feeling the desperation, is to stop feeling like you have to struggle and struggle and struggle, to stop feeling like you are waiting and waiting and waiting. You've essentially been battling time and you, but all along you thought <laughs> it was something else. You thought it was the lack of money. You thought it was the lack of love. You thought it was the lack of success. You thought it was the long struggle. You thought it was the waiting and the waiting and the waiting. And those things on a certain level of your experience are all true and your struggle has been real and your pain is valid. The missing piece of the puzzle is that it's not about the problem, it's not about the thing, it's about time. And now you're understanding this and it is shifting your experience of time that will change your experience of your life. You'll be able to see your, your problems, your struggles, your challenges in an entirely new light. Nine of Swords in reverse. The releasing of this anxiety. I'm recording this video. It's the first video I'm making of 2023. This is a new year. This is a timeless reading for whenever you receive this. But what was relevant for me was over the past two months, I've been on an extended hiatus because I was sick. I had laryngitis, I couldn't speak, I couldn't do readings. I spent six weeks on the couch, coughing up phlegm, <laughs> and my my life slowed down to a crawl. My, my life, my perception of time slowed down to the, the time between coughs, essentially. I was coughing so much that I just wanted to exist in those periods of time between coughing and I did nothing. I was on bed rest for six weeks. I am so grateful. I am so, so, so grateful for that experience because in this forced slowdown, I, what it felt to me was that all my life I have been rushing so fast, in a hurry, in a hurry, rush, rush, rush all the time, always feeling like I'm under a deadline, always feeling like I have to get everything done really fast so that I have time to do everything else really fast so that I can hurry up and get everything done so that I can whatever, always. My entire life I've been in a mad, panicked rush. <laughs> Finally being forced to slow all the way down. I, I actually felt, I, I call them time spikes. It was like all of my life I have been the victim of time almost. It was like I could feel in my light body these spikes, these spikes because they were very uncomfortable. And it's like they were lodged in my light body. And as I did nothing for six weeks, I felt them like dissolve and eject. And I had several different, you know, mystical experiences of having these time spikes removed. And once they were gone, my entire perspective on time shifted N like no longer will I rush to make a sandwich really fast so that I can eat the sandwich really fast so that I can clean the house really fast so that maybe I can have 
um, an hour to read a book and then go to bed, right? Rush, 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 rush. Um, so much time anxiety, always in a time crisis, always, 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 until the time spikes were removed. They were removed and now the time anxiety, the time induced anxiety has been released, is gone, is gone, is gone. And for a while, I, for a few more weeks, once I got better, I was just very, very slow, doing everything very slowly. I was slowing way, way down and I would watch how I poured the coffee into the mug and I would be slicing cucumbers and do it very slowly. And I was, and I thought, this is good. This is good. I have slowed way down and I am experiencing my life in so much more detail and it is so much healthier and I am free of the time, the time stress. It took a few weeks of that before I started to speed back up. And this is the part that is very hard to describe, but I mean, this is all hard to describe, but you'll know, you'll be able to recognize this when you experience it. So don't worry if you can't conceptualize this in your mind because you it's one of those things that you might not understand until you've experienced it. But as soon as you've experienced it, you'll recognize it and you know it. Where if you go through this slowdown and you go, yes, the slow is good. And then you start speeding back up and you realize you can watch and notice your body moving faster, cutting the vegetables faster, taking out the garbage faster, doing things more quickly, doing more things, just getting more things done. But your mind has not, is not speeding up. <laughs> your perception is staying sharp. Your perception is, is staying slow and it is very, interesting and very powerful sensation of staying in that still state your inner your inner experience of your body your inner experience of your consciousness of your perception your awareness stays still your awareness stays still and you feel every breath and you feel like you're walking around in that meditative state of sharpened awareness and yet you have not been relegated to being slow. <laughs> Your body actually starts to speed back up and you even find that you can do things quickly with greater precision because you are seeing more of what you are doing because you are more fully present and because your consciousness has slowed down and found harmony with the consensus time flow, then your body is actually more free to interact with space, with the physical reality. Without the time stress, throwing it off balance. So then there is this simultaneous experience of stillness, a simultaneous experience of deep stillness, of deep awareness, of timelessness. And at the same time, also experiencing faster speed, heightened efficiency, more detail. Bringing together time and space, space and time and your experience of it. Slowing down to speed up. It is an extremely powerful feeling, an extremely, extremely powerful feeling because you finally feel like you finally clicked into the human experience as if your consciousness has been hovering around your body sort of in your body but never never not really like never entirely in your body and this is largely true for many star seeds that even even though you have been grounding and you've been coming down to earth and you've been descending and all of this there was still something that wasn't quite connected between your consciousness and your body there was still resistance to being fully, 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 fully immersed in the human experience. Still resistance to fully experiencing Earth. And once you allow your consciousness to slow down and synchronize with the consensus time flow, then you fully click in like two Lego pieces finally clicking together. 
And interestingly, this also brings you new understanding and a new appreciation of different types of humans that before perhaps you could never really understand. Imagine somebody who dedicates their entire life to their golf game. They're not, even, they're not a professional golfer, they're just a random person living a very average life. Their passion is golf. They spend thousands of dollars on golf clubs. They spend four days a week golfing. They think about golf all day. Golf is everything to them. And perhaps you could look at this person and not understand, not understand this. How, how, how could they live their life just thinking about golf and just thinking about how to improve their golf game? Your new experience of time will help you understand that type of experience because people like someone who spends their whole life immersed in their golf game they have actually been holding the secrets that you are just discovering now. So, it is very easy for starseeds to not understand the experiences that other kinds of humans are having. because previously there was no easy way to share experience. Some other kinds of humans could not understand your experience. Yours was very different, but yours was also very different from theirs and you could not understand their experience. And you have been holding space for them. You have been bringing down higher dimensional consciousness. You have been activating and catalyzing the evolution of consciousness. You have been doing incredibly important work. So have they. So have the people who have been moving very slowly. So have the people who have been incredibly grounded into the human experience. So have the people who have been immersed in golf or whatever it is that they are immersed in. The ones who might seem... It might, it might have seemed to you in the past that they were not evolving their consciousness the way you are. In fact, they have been involving, evolving consciousness and exploring consciousness in partnership with you. In partnership with you, they have been exploring aspects of consciousness that you had yet to explore. You were up here exploring higher consciousness, exploring speed, exploring acceleration. They were over here exploring slowness and grounded, groundedness and immersion in the physical. And they were, ha many of them would describe their experience of physical life in terms that would be very satisfying. They would have described their physical life as very satisfying because of things such as their immersion in their golf game. That level of satisfaction and immersion in mundane physical human life is now available to you because you have finally synchronized with the earth experience. You have not lost anything. You have not lost what you might call your starseed self, your starseed consciousness, your higher consciousness. You have only gained. You have only gained. Just as this other person, this other type of person that we will imagine. And they are opening up their higher consciousness. They're opening up their third eye and their crown chakra. They're opening up to your type of spiritual experience, your abstract experience of consciousness. Just as they are growing to become more like you you are also growing and expanding to become more like them. For you, it has been a process of healing and opening and balancing your lower chakras. Where they are healing and balancing and opening their upper chakras, you are healing and balancing and opening your lower chakras to get fully connected. And 
this is the two streams, right? You are coming down and getting grounded and they are going up and opening up to higher realms. Two streams, two streams, equally important. Now available to work together in a new level of harmony. A new level of harmony between these two types of experiences that are being had on earth. Higher dimensional movement, which has been you. Innocence of pentacles. Grounded earth experience. Now coming together. The naked heart now coming together in oneness, in oneness, meeting in the middle, finding that center point. Realizing all along that all along, the thing you were in opposition to, the thing you have sometimes battled, the thing you have sometimes fought, is actually just like you. Even though it might seem to be your exact opposite, it might seem to be your exact opposite, and you might go, that thing is nothing like me, it has nothing to do with me, it is my exact opposite. It, you will, you will know when you know, you will understand when you understand that it is just like you. It is just like you. It is exactly like you. You have essentially been fighting yourself. Have you ever watched a flock of birds flying over a farm field? feeding or any flock of birds or school of fish where there's dozens, hundreds, even thousands of small creatures all swirling around in an incredible mass of swirling bodies and you might wonder how do they all not run into each other. <laughs> Interestingly, when humans are in a crowd like that, we all are constantly bumping up into each other. Animals don't have that problem. They can swim in a school of fish or they can flock together as birds and they can be in the chaos they can navigate the chaos they can perfectly perfectly almost never colliding almost never running into each other because the animals are not distracted by the human mind the animals are living in perfect synchronicity doing exactly what comes naturally in every moment and they are it's not that they are more connected to spirit, to source, to earth, to Gaia than you are. It's only that they are free of the human mind. The human mind has often gotten in the way. The human mind has often gotten in the way. And one of the greatest ways that the human mind gets in the way is by thinking about time by making you feel that time is running out, by making you feel like you have waited too long for something, by making you feel that you just need to get to the end, that you just need to survive a little longer, that you just need to push through a little harder, that you just need to do something a little faster, that you just need to be more efficient. These are all ways that the human mind is disrupting and destabilizing your experience. But that is all fading into your past now because now you can immerse yourself in this most exquisitely powerful experience of being fully present not just in your body not just in your physical space but in your temporal space fully present in your temporal space and there is a legacy available to this this is actually even though synchronizing into this new experience of time, it is an end point. It, it is the end of a long journey that you've gone on to get here. It is also just the beginning of a new book. 
the, the, the new book will be all of your new experiences of time that will become available to you after this moment of synchronization. Potential experiences include meeting yourself from your past, your future of this life. Understanding how this life right now and a life you had in another star system millions of years ago are happening like co-currently are happening right now, right now. And that one is influencing the other. And that none of your lives exist independently, that they are all being lived simultaneously, that they are all co-creating each other. Um, cause and effect becomes more interesting. The linear human mind says that we cause something and then we experience an effect. That was just our perception. You can have an experience, you can experience something, you can experience an effect of something that hasn't happen, happened yet. You can experience effect and then cause. You can experience something and go, oh, I know what's coming because I see what causes this in my future. You can have experiences and go, I don't understand if I made this happen or if I am simply watching it unfold in perfect synchronicity. You will have new questions about synchronicity. You will have new questions about cause and effect. You could show up. You could walk into a room just in time to catch an expensive vase as it falls off the shelf. And you could wonder, was I brought here in perfect timing to prevent this disaster from happening? Or did I walk into the room and cause this almost disaster? Don't try to answer that question. The question is interesting. The question is worth having and worth feeling into, but there really is no answer to that that will satisfy your linear human mind because the answer cannot be delivered in linear language in a way that will satisfy the human mind. So any answer you come up with won't really be the most true. Sometimes when something happens, and this can be often very, very good things, very, very good things can be happening to you, and you can wonder, how did this happen in such perfect synchronicity? How did this wonderful, amazing thing happen in such perfect synchronicity? And it can feel like you didn't do anything to create it. You didn't do anything to cause this. It just happened. Sometimes in those moments, you are receiving something that you caused in the future. Instead of thinking constantly about what you are doing, about how you are acting, about how you are acting and asserting your will on the world, about how you are throwing the ball. We always think we are throwing the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball. That's asserting our will. That is taking an action. Sometimes we're catching the ball. Sometimes we're catching a ball that you threw back at yourself from the future. Maybe only two seconds in the future. It 
it's like your bubble of time begins to expand and you become not necessarily on a mental level. This is not about being able to say, I know what's going to happen two seconds from now. The experience is much more embodied than that. It is about your body understanding your bones even. This is about your bones understanding what has a large potential to happen two seconds from now. Because now that you've clicked, now that you've synchronized, your body is actually the point of communication. Yourself two seconds from now, your future self, two seconds in your current, current future, is having experiences and having sensations. And those are vibrating in the body. Those vibrate in the body. And the body vibrates that knowledge out in all directions of time, forward, sideways, backward, any other directions of time you could think of. So your body has been the missing link. If you want to live with beautiful synchronicity, having things magically somehow work out right place at the right time on a whole new level, on a whole new level, It's not about having your guides come down and tell you what will happen in the future. It's not about being able to see the future or to predict the future. So, some, many star seeds, some star seeds, many star seeds have been trying to skip over the embodiment part and try to have all of these experiences from a higher level because that is where you came from and that is what is normal to you. So it makes sense. But the missing link all along was the body, the embodiment, and the body's immersion in this geography of space and the body's immersion in the geography of time. And also getting fully, fully acquainted and in communication with your own body. This very much even includes your bones. Your bones themselves are conscious and your bones themselves have their own very unique and special type of consciousness and your bones and your flesh, all part of your body, of course, but they are two separate types of consciousness. I was actually, my husband was giving me a massage on the Capricorn solstice. And this is when I met my bones. I met my bones because he was, you know, giving me a back massage. And you know, sending love to my body because to receive a massage by someone who loves you and who loves your body is very particularly special. And I, I entered a state of such deep relaxation that I, I met my bones and they were conscious. And it was so profound to me that I had been walking around in my body my whole life and I had never even thought about my bones. I never knew that they were conscious or that they considered themselves distinct from the rest of my body. And when I, when I met the consciousness of my bones, it was, they are simply aware. They are aware and they do want to receive love and they do want to be acknowledged by the human consciousness, by the soul animating the body. But the bones, It's a very interesting type of consciousness. It is foundational. It is the foundational structure of your human experience. The bones don't want much. They don't need much. They don't require much. They do want acknowledgement. They do want love. They do want consideration. Other than that, they seem largely happy to be your foundation. Just take them into consideration and know how important they are as this nexus point, as this center point, because your bones are vibrating with the knowledge from the future. And we can easily understand that our bones vibrate with knowledge from the past, but our bones are equally, equally, equally vibrating from what happens to us in the future. 
So getting fully, fully, fully immersed and connected with your bones is part of this new experience of being fully immersed in the human life. The art of immersion, right? The art of immersion. Immer immersing yourself in everything, immersing yourself in your body, immersing yourself in your senses, in your physical reality, in the time experience. And now you are more centered than you have ever been before in this human experience. You are more whole than you have ever been before in this human experience. You have more potential and opportunities available to you than ever before. You have more room for your own consciousness in your body. <sighs> there can easily be a phase here of focusing on grounded human life and perhaps feeling disconnected from the spiritual life, but just know that now the spiritual life is the physical life. It is all one. And any ideas you had of separating the two are part of your divided past and they don't really have anything to do with your new experience of wholeness moving into the... I was going to say moving into your future, but that's not even really it. It's this new place of immersion. Just feel how powerful this is. I don't have words to describe the power of this feeling. It is so empowered. It is so powerful. It is a balance of all the elements. That It is fiery. It is earthy. It is watery. It is airy. It is etheric. It is this balance of all of the elements. It is this place of plasma. It is this place of power. It is this place of intensity but not an intensity that comes with with rushing speed i used to think that intensity had to involve rushing speed but there's this intensity that comes with this place of stillness the intensity of stillness i used to think that stillness and intensity were opposites that they had nothing to do with each other now i find the intensity and the speed in the stillness it is paradoxical but it is the experience that is available here and it is the experience that you will be moving towards everyone in their own perfect timing and I know that you will now never <laughs> have concerns that you are moving at the wrong speed your journey is perfect for you and understanding the perfect timing the divine timing of your unfoldment is absolutely foundational and essential to the rest of this experience some might all might click into this new place of empowered stillness very quickly others may walk through a more of an unfolding process for months or even years but anything that happens in the future has already happened for you it's just how are you experiencing the journey to get there anything that you have at some other point in space-time, you have it now because all of your points, all of your lives, all of the minutes of this life, they are all one thing. They are all one whole. You are one whole being. You are one whole being. Everything that you have ever been, everything that you ever will be, is, exists all at the same time. You are one whole being. And you have it all. You have your whole self. And you have everything that you ever have in the palms of your hands right now. So, sending you guys so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.